Hello, this is uh, Mark Truly, president of the Institute on uh, Religion and Democracy, speaking to you from uh, the pulpit of the old Presbyterian Reading House in uh, colonial um, Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, this uh, meeting house or church is uh, significant in that it was the only legal dissenting church uh, permitted in uh, the uh, colonial capital of Virginia uh, before the American Revolution. Of course, uh, the Church of England was uh, the established church in Virginia, as in uh, many other um, colonies. And uh, dissenting uh, religious believers are, were uh, regulated and uh, tolerated uh, sometimes only marginally. Uh, but the Presbyterians uh, gained a foothold here in Virginia and in uh, Williamsburg and elsewhere and had a great influence on uh, the orator and statesman uh, Patrick Henry. Uh, Presbyterian preaching um, uh, very much um, influenced uh, his own uh, flamboyant and powerful style of um, oratory that led him to uh, give his uh, give me liberty or give me death uh, speech at the St. John Anglican Church in uh, Richmond. And uh, perhaps even more importantly, uh, the Presbyterian dissenters of Virginia influenced uh, later uh, James Madison and um, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, the Presbyterians, along with the Baptists, uh, uh, the limits upon their religious liberty uh, were an eff offense to uh, Jefferson and Madison, uh, who um, crafted uh, the earliest uh, legislation in America in defense of uh, religious freedom and uh, disestablishing uh, the church uh, in Virginia, uh, forming a precedent and a model for religious freedom uh, uh, in the new United States uh, as enshrined um, eventually in the First Amendment, the Bill of Rights of our Constitution. A lot of this history, of course, uh, unfortunately, is uh, forgotten uh, by many Americans today, including Christians, especially young Christians, and uh, sadly, uh, religious freedom has become, uh, for many, a hot-button culture war issue uh, that is uh, studiously um, avoided. Uh, many Christians who are advocates of uh, so-called social justice uh, do not include uh, religious freedom for all on their menu of social justice concerns. And of course, recently, we had the um, uh, controversial case of uh, the Christian baker in Colorado who was uh, penalized for his unwillingness to uh, bake a, a cake for a gay wedding. Uh, ultimately, most recently, the Supreme Court uh, ruled in his uh, favor, but there are many other similar cases, and uh, many Christians are staying away from addressing uh, these important topics of uh, religious freedom. Uh, some Christians believe that religious freedom uh, privileges Christians and therefore uh, should not be advocated by other Christians. Uh, others think that it's uh, simply an issue a hot button issue for the religious right. Uh, these perspectives are very short sighted. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and others rightly understood that a society cannot have liberty of conscience without uh, freedom of religion. And that freedom of religion uh, for all is a protection for all. It does not pr privilege uh, any. And that if uh, Christians or others are persecuted uh, uh, for their faith and for their convictions, then ultimately nobody is safe in terms of their conscience rights. So I hope that um, all of us um, who uh, believe in uh, order liberty, and especially those of us who are Christian by faith, uh, make a priority of affirm affirming, uh, cherishing, advocating for, and protecting religious freedom for all here in our own United States of America, and uh, to the extent possible, around the world, that any time somebody suffers uh, for reasons of uh, conscience, uh, we should stand in solidarity uh, with them and affirm each person who is an image bearer of God as having an innate uh, dignity and rights of conscience. So uh, those are my thoughts for today from uh, Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia. I'm uh, on my way to the Virginia Conference of the United Methodist Church in uh, nearby um, Hampton, and perhaps I'll have a, a few words about what happens there next time I speak with you. So until then, bye-bye.